Welcome to this new uh, episode of uh, Robustly Beneficial. Today, we're going to uh, discuss a paper from the Proceeding of National Academy of, uh, of Science called uh, Exposure to Opposing Views on Social Media Can Increase Political Polarization. And I really, really uh, enjoyed this paper, uh, especially the finding of this paper, because it's counterintuitive and it shows just how difficult being robustly beneficial is especially when it comes to uh, well, human interactions and in particular here uh, about political polarization, which is a, a topic on which you can easily have uh, backfire effects. So it's easy to come up with ideas that sound intuitively amazing, but uh, when you test them, uh, well, you can realize that it's actually uh, trickier, a lot trickier than this. The basic idea of this intervention that they study uh, is uh, comes from the fact that uh, because of recommended system on social media, we mostly see the same type of content that we are already used to because the uh, algorithms have picked up that this is what we are most likely to to click like on. So this created uh, the phenomena called the uh, echo chambers, where uh, if you are Democrat, you will mostly see pro-Democrat uh, arguments in your in your newsfeed, and if you are Republican, you will mostly see pro Republican argument in your newsfeed. So this, uh, this amplify uh, how people are politically polarized uh, uh, on, on social media. And uh, the, the, the first idea that, that came up to, to, to fight this is simply to uh, take content from, uh, from another echo chamber and, and, and show it to you in, a, in your own echo chamber. And this is what, uh, what they study in this paper. Uh, I, th I think the idea of uh, of uh, yeah, breaking the, the echo chamber and like having these contents from other echo chambers exposed uh, to uh, well, people who are not from this uh, echo chamber uh, is something that has been promoted a lot. It's called uh, like diversity uh, in recommendations, and it's often recommendations where, like in many uh, discussions in many papers uh, about. Uh, uh, how to design more beneficial uh, recommended systems. Uh, there's often this mention that we should increase diversity. And uh, it's often like, well, not tested, like it's often like more of a, a, a intuitively good idea that people have is just like, you should increase diversity. And I, I think there's a, an assumption uh, that uh, this will reduce uh, political polarization. And uh, well, it, this paper is very interesting because it shows that it's it's not that simple. So the the way they they run the experiment, uh, they, they they found a uh, one thousand and six hundred uh, participants. Out of them, they they, they were tested uh, at the beginning of the experiment to to measure what side of the political spectrum they they fall in. So they had approximately fifty fifty uh, participants in a, in each category, and then a category of Republicans and Democrats. Then, uh, then they, they, they took half of each category to to subject subject them to the uh, treatment protocol, uh, which consisted in simply following a Twitter bot and uh, and seeing messages uh, uh, posted by this Twitter bot, uh, which posted uh, twenty four retweeted twenty four messages per day, either picked out of a cluster of a Republicans account or picked out of a cluster of Democrats accounts. Uh, at the beginning, uh, participants were selected based on uh, how much they use Twitter, and they only considered participants that use Twitter in average more than three times a week. So they expected that uh, the interaction with the bot of this participant were, would, would be well high. Um, participants who were in the treatment uh, condition every week had to answer a small survey, a small test, to, to make sure that the, they were actually engaging and seeing the the message uh, from this uh, Twitter bot. And uh, among these messages, there were some that were not even political, but simply to test, like the, the bot was posting an image of an animal, and then the participant were asked about what animal was being posted by the bot, so that they they could measure actually how much participants in the experiment were interacting with the, with, with the bot. Uh, and uh, this this lasted for, for between four and six weeks, and uh, and then participants were tested again on their 
uh, their political spectrum uh, the idea we were testing again. And so what they found that uh, Republicans were that were uh, interacting with this uh, Twitter bot, uh, tweeting uh, Democrat content. They they became a, a half a standard deviation, uh, more polarized in, in, on their own side. And uh, they did not find a statistically significant result for for Democrats, but it seems to indicate that it went in the, in the same direction of more polarization. Yeah. That's, this is very bad news. <laughs> it shows that uh, a simple intervention like this, at least, is not going to be e effective and can even be counterproductive uh, in terms of uh, political uh, polarization. And if you think about this, it kind of makes sense. Like if you think a little bit uh, more, like it's it's not clear that if you're exposed to more content from uh, politicians of the the party you don't like. Uh, it's not clear that this will uh, get you to enjoy these uh, these ideas more. Uh, it's, and, and this is not like uh, specific to this study. Um, there, there are other researches in in, uh, in psychology that show that uh, well, you have this backfire effect, this uh, reactant sometimes it's called, yeah. where if you're exposed to an idea that's too remote from what you believe. And especially if this idea is expressed in uh, a very uh, uh, clashy way, in a very, uh, you know, like very harshly, uh, then well, you, you can feel that uh, this kind of message is uh, threatening what you believe, and, and then you can be more in a in a defense mode, in a soldier mode, uh, where you're trying to to defend your ideas. You feel like you're under attack. And this can uh, lead you to, 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 this can create the habit in you that you well, get used to defending your ideas all the time, uh, which can slow down, uh, well, increase, which can increase polarization and prevent you from better understanding the ideas of the other side, uh, for instance. Yeah, so, so there's a, a lot of uh, psychological ground. And uh, based on this, like, I, I guess it could have been predicted that the result would go this way. Like when I read this uh, this paper, I was not maybe uh, thinking about this psychological background uh, sufficiently. Uh, in any case, I was uh, quite surprised with the results, and uh, I think this is something to take into account uh, when designing more robustly beneficial uh, algorithms. I wanted to ask a question: like, uh, if if you had to design a recommender system and you have these findings in mind, and you know the diversifying the feed just naively diversifying is not necessarily something that will decrease polarization. So what would be the less naive way to, to, to diversify the feed? Like I, I have a proposition and maybe you can, you can have another one, which is what about, so, so let's say there's like a, a echo chamber A, echo chamber B. If I show someone from B a post from A, they get, uh, so she or he gets um, angry. On average, uh, if I do it naively, uh, could but could we use the finding to spot like when someone from B used the vocabulary of B to promote an idea from A, and then ex and then spread it to B? Like how easy it is to spot vocabulary from echo chamber of B. So someone from B spotting with the vocabulary of B ideas coming from A. Let's say, let's say, let's say, someone who is like completely against, uh, so completely like for uh, uh, the non-intervention or uh, non-intervention of the state. Okay, so he, so someone or she or he is using vocabulary from um, from Reaganian politics to promote public health care. Yeah, uh, and then if we spot that, we can just show this this kind of post to to the echo chamber B and. Uh, of course, uh, at, the, at the at the other side, someone who uses vocabulary, she's using or he's using vocabulary from public intervention, intervention, strong state, and, uh, and and public service to promote ideas that might sound from echo chamber B. Yeah, I think this is a, a, an interesting proposal. Um, yeah, so. so I, I, I guess in the end, we need more data. So I think one thing that this paper really shows is that 
uh, all of these phenomenons, phenomenons are very complex and uh, we, we need a lot more data to better understand what are the impacts of, the, of uh, this or that kind of recommendation. Um, and maybe also we can stress the fact that uh, while the study like included uh, 1,600 people, I think initially, uh, like not all of the the users like uh, followed through, and we like we only have partial data, and there's a lot of variability between from one person to another. I, so, I agree that this is complex. I, I just like want to to add further speculation. So imagine imagine we do the experience. So we do the experiment. And we find uh, we find like uh, even even less intuitive uh, findings, so like showing someone from echo chamber B uh, an idea from echo chamber e A, but promoted with the vocabulary of echo chamber B from someone from the echo chamber B. So instead of making them like the idea, they will just split to echo chamber B prime. Yeah. <laughs> then you'd have B B prime and A A prime just add more echo chambers instead of solving the polarization problem. I don't know, this is just speculation. Yeah, so but definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure the phenomenon is so complex that, uh, that doing the experiment will, would lead to uh, another non-intuitive uh, finding. Yeah. yeah. As Les said, uh, we, we, we need more data. And we also want that uh, while collecting this data, we also want to be algorithms to be beneficial. And, uh, and the way to do this is something we discussed already uh, several weeks ago uh, using uh, multi-arm bandits. Uh, algorithm. So the idea of this is simply that there will be a, an algorithm doing the experiments to collect data, but doing it in a way that uh, to reducing its own uncertainty on uh, what are good intervention and not. Maybe uh, the intervention you propose maybe is going to be a good one. So in that case, uh, the algorithms will use this intervention, observe that this intervention is doing uh, what we desire it to be doing, and select more and more this intervention uh, as time goes by, if there is no other intervention that's even better than this one. If we realize the, an intuitive result that this intervention you propose is a, is a negative one, then uh, the algorithms using a multi embedded exploration would uh, lower lower the, the number of time that it actually does this intervention, because we see that it's uh, not a beneficial inter intervention. Yeah. And another thing, like th these are things that we already discussed uh, in other episodes, uh, more dedicated to these different uh, topics. But another thing we discussed uh, in a very earlier episode was uh, the problem of long-term effects, and this is part particularly striking for these kinds of uh, phenomenons of, uh, of of political polarization, which take over, uh, what, which last for for months. It's not like you're watching your content, and right after that, you, you become polarized. Uh, it's more like a subtle step-by-step, uh, step, but after a month's uh, important uh, phenomenon. And uh, yeah, A-B testing and uh, multi arm bandit uh, is, not, is not necessarily going to be, uh, uh, well, it, it has the, its limits when it comes to, uh, to long-term uh, effects. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's very complicated, <laughs> unfortunately, mm -hmm. but we need uh, like probably, uh, I think it's very, very important. That's the thing is both, very hard, but it's also very important. So we really need to put a, a lot more means and, uh, and data collections about these, these things if we want to make progress. And I think this is like a, a research area that where well, you need a lot of interdisciplinarity. Uh, it, it, of course, it has to do with politics but yeah, and sociology, but it also has a lot to do with psychology, the way we interpret different things. And uh, and also with data and social networks, uh, so yeah, all of these uh, uh, expertises uh, have to be combined. And fortunately, it's, yeah, I, I, unfortunately, I'd say it's not an area of research that's uh, investigated enough. I'd say uh, so far. Yeah, so, so we take, for instance, uh, the example of Medi, like uh, another risk uh, that I could imagine. Uh, would be that uh, while uh, while the two sides uh, uh, like agree on the same ideas because they're using different vocabularies, they may still feel like they are in contradiction with the other side, and uh, they would still be clashing, even though they actually agree. Uh, but just the difference of vocabulary can can make things uh, very hard at, at times. Another type of intervention that we discussed was uh, simply uh, 
pushing people to think more in terms of uh, of nuance and uh, uncertainty because uh, it's very dramatic that uh, people on two opposite sides are overly confidently convinced that uh, they are right and that others are, are, are wrong and and uh, certainly the 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 right way to, to to think about these kind of issues is to, to be in the middle to understand that there is a difficult trade-off between a positive and negative uh, uh, arguments and that it's a it's a very difficult debate instead of simply focusing on the the arguments that uh, people like to hear and uh, using their uh, confirmation bias uh, being confidently convinced of uh, of their their own idea yeah yeah, one thing we discussed was the, this idea that uh, when it comes to, to politics, um, uh, it's very easy to fall into this uh, soldier mode where you, instead of trying to understand problems better, you're going to defend your ideas and you, you're going to, to try to, to stick to your ideas. Um, so well, there's this, voc uh, this vocabulary by Hugh Agaf about soldier mode versus scout mode, uh, where he, intuitively like when you're in soldier mode and this has to do uh, what there are like uh, neurobiological uh, uh, explanations found like uh, like yeah connections with neurobiology like apparently apparently the the amygdala that's responsible to the the fear uh, is really activated when you're talking about politics uh, and, and you can really think of this as you you are ready to fight and to to, to stay yeah to defend your ground and so when it comes to politics, like it's like there's this line, uh, this political line, and as soon as the, the the topic becomes political, we try to we clinch to uh, to where we are. We're trying to, to stick to where we are, and we're defending our position. And, and that's not uh, the, the 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 ideal framework for 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 exploration, for understanding, for 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 sharing different ideas. Um, and uh, so instead of that, like instead of getting these people in this mode, like it, it's probably before getting them to, to slide on this line, like a, a prior step should probably be like to get uh, everybody to, to sort of stand up, like to 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 rise above their, their position, to, to to be willing to to move a little bit in a sense. Uh, and the way to do this would probably not by directly talking about politics, but maybe by uh, proposing uh, contents that are more like, um, engaging in terms of curiosity uh, that are intriguing that will make people think uh, things that maybe are more meta as well like that would get people to think about how they think uh, and how others are, are thinking uh, yeah, maybe like the best way to, to fight polarization would be something along these lines uh, uh, but yeah again like further research and, and more data collection is needed to, to understand all of this better so thank you for, for, for listening to our podcast. Uh, next week, we will discuss the uh, recently added uh, new entry on AI ethics in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Uh, thank you for listening. Bye-bye.